All right, now it's time to take a look at my three Super Nintendo controllers. One of these works really well, and the other two don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a game like Street Fighter 2, which uses all the buttons, and do a quick test of each one. I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure that really the only buttons I'm having trouble with is just the star button. But uh, I'm gonna do a quick test. Then we're gonna take them apart, clean them up, and see if I can get them working again. So let's go to burst battle for some two player action. All right, so this is player one, up, down, left, right. I'm touching them lightly. Start button, good. Now this controller here, I, okay. Yeah, so this one, the start button, isn't working half the time. I think everything else is good. Um, start button, second player. So, let's get the other controller. This one looks like it's been hanging out with Miss Pac-Man. I don't know what happened to this one. Some of these things I, I got free from somebody who didn't want it anymore, so it was like in a garbage bag, essentially. And I'm pretty sure Miss Pac-Man and this controller might have been it. So um, let me plug this in for player one. All right, left, right, down, up. All right. Well, can't test select. Yeah. Start button doesn't work at all. Not surprising since there's something here that's uh, close to it, so maybe something leaked in there. All the other buttons seem to work good, though. So I'm going to go ahead and take apart this controller and uh, the second player controller. I couldn't remember there for a second. And uh, I'm going to take them apart, clean them up. It looks like it's really just going to be the start button, but I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to plug them back in, and hopefully that will solve the problem. Because not having a good start button can be annoying if you're trying to get into menus and such like that. At least the rest of the buttons are clean, but I'll still get those good too. Alright, so taking these apart and cleaning them is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to use the isopropyl alcohol again. Of course, you need to make sure if it's 70% like the stuff I ended up getting, that you're making sure everything is dry before you put it all together. So you don't have any, you know, any issues with corrosion down the road. All right, so similar to what we did previously with the games, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So this is the controller that the start button didn't work at all. And obviously it's the one that's really dirty. So I'm gonna just take this one apart and clean it up. And I'll show you the process. Luckily, it just takes regular Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna go ahead and do that, clean it up, plug it back in, and hopefully we'll get it working. I'll do this one off camera. So you don't have to see me do the same thing twice. All right, if you don't have one of these already, you just go on Amazon um, and pick, look up any of these type of kits. This is one of those iFixit style kits, and it has all the different type of screwdrivers that you would ever possibly need. And I think I'm probably going to use probably going to use this one here, which didn't actually come with a kit. I got another one of these things too that I use, and I like to have a couple different packs because you never know when you're going to strip out a, a screwdriver, and that's the last thing you need to do is. Or that's the last thing you want is to have to reorder something. Gonna have a couple on hand. So you look at the back of the Super Nintendo controller and you're just gonna see five screws. You got one here, 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 and here. So that's the first thing you wanna do is take those out. Jeez. This thing's really in there. I think I'm just gonna use this little lid that I found from something. And uh, pop the screws in there so we don't lose them. All right, so this screwdriver is a little bit skinny, and since uh, there's something going on with these screws where they're just gunked up, I need something with a little bit more grip. So I'm going to change this one out for one with a better handle. All right, there you go. Little upgrade. You got more grip now. And if you're lucky enough, you get yourself one that has a magnetic end that'll help you pull those screws out. I should have just went with this in the first place. Didn't realize I uh, was going to have such an issue.
All right, so that was the fifth one. So what you're gonna do is now that the screws are off, you just kind of give it a little wiggle like that. <laughs> Drop it on the table. And you'll see here that this wire wraps around these poles here. That's just to keep it from pulling the wires off the PCB. That's sort of how all like controllers and electronics are set up. So we just want to undo that. I'm going to go ahead and remove carefully the L and R's. They have a little rod to keep it in place and a little rubber butt button that flew off. It just goes, just goes in here. You got to be real careful. You're going to start losing pieces like crazy. Do the same on the other side. Take the rubber button off and it's up to you if you want to disconnect that or not. I'm not going to go through all that. Very gently lift up or I could just do that. But if you do that, all your buttons are going to fall out. So you kind of want to have to, there you go, there you go. All right, so with everything apart, this is the PCB. So you have your LNRs up here. I'm being very, very careful not to bend anything because it's loosely put together. The one of the rubber pads was stuck to this a little bit, so I know I'm going to need to clean this area with some isopropyl alcohol all the way across, especially this area. I could definitely see that it's kind of nasty in here. And then I'll hit up all of these spots where the buttons are and then... That'll do it for that. If you look here, you can see how disgusting the D-pad is. I mean, the D-pad works. Everything works fine, but they just need a good cleaning. And yeah, it's hard to tell. But that start and select pad is really disgusting. It needs to be cleaned up. That should solve it. And these pads here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean all these up real quick, and I'll show you how I do that. All right, so here we go. Let's get these rubber pads all in one spot. Okay, I like to take them apart and out the same directions as they are in the thing. Makes it a little bit easier to put back together, though they pretty much made it foolproof at this point. D-pad. All right, so first up, just like usual, I got the isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit all the pads up. Now, even though you can clean all this stuff with isopropyl alcohol if you want, really the most ideal way, which I didn't think of this before I brought all this stuff down here, is just to take all these little pieces and put them in some soapy water, scrub them up and clean them that way. It really doesn't matter what you do, you just wanna get them clean. And same thing with the inside of here. Um, but I did use a Q-tip to get inside the start and select buttons as it was so gunked up. I mean, it's disgusting. The, um, and in here too, it's pretty nasty and along the edges here, that's just from d <laughs> disgusting hands. You know, you're, you're eating your cheese doodles or whatever you're doing and you're playing your games. I get it. We all do it. Um, unfortunately somebody did it quite often. This is, this was, um, was not my controller, not to say that I never had gross controllers, but this one, this one was in rough shape. So. I'm gonna take, I'm actually gonna pop these out, buttons. Clean this up as best I can with what I got here in the basement. Clean up the buttons a little bit and reassemble it. Now what's nice about the button layout is if you look, it actually tells you which colors and which buttons go where. And if I remember correctly, the blue and green, that was the European and Japanese version where here in America we had the two different color lavender and purple I guess that's yeah so I'm gonna clean this up those guys down there I'm also gonna clean up and I'm gonna do one more thing all I'm gonna do is these little contact pads here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of paper that I have somewhere and all I'm gonna do is gonna take each little pad and just Rub it across a few times on each pad. And sometimes stuff, something will come off, sometimes it doesn't. You don't want to do this too crazy, but what this does is it'll smooth it out a little bit. 
for a little bit more even contact and sometimes sometimes that's needed so I'll do that to all the contacts every single one that has one even these little guys here and uh, continue cleaning cleaning some of this stuff up now sometimes if you're trying to clean some of this stuff it's really gross but if you happen to have one of these like spudger things where there's a little plastic end, a little pokey end, a little little chisel end. You can take that and go in there and really get that nasty, nasty stuff off. It's a little gross, but a little bit of effort will come a long way. All right, so like before, I'm just you don't have to use isopropyl alcohol, it's just what I happen to have down here, but I'm using this in the Q-tip to clean up all this extra stuff here, especially especially inside the start and select. You can see all this gunk. A lot of times if the button is working, but it's when you press it, it's real gunky. This is usually the culprit. You get this cleaned up, and then those buttons will be feeling smooth in no time. Yeah, gotta get that out of that for sure. <laughs> All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this PCB, especially, especially in that area. Even though the select button, I guess, was working on it now, I couldn't actually test it. Um, it's going across the whole thing, so. A little bit of isopropyl alcohol. We'll scrub. Hopefully, any luck. So. If you look here, this is clean. You look here, this is not clean. I've already scraped a little bit of it away, but I'm going to give it some more room so that I can make a good contact in between. And that's probably why this one was not working functionally. So, a little bit of a clean scrape across here. Another, another little clean action here. And this whole area was pretty disgusting, but that's clearly was going to cause an issue. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to let this dry. I've got this looking better, I guess. I didn't really do 100% clean on. I could have done a better job. But I'm feeling lazy, and I've got about 10 of these controllers, so I'm not too concerned about it. So i got all these pieces laying all around. I'm going to start to assemble, except I do have a couple more spots I'm going to clean before I do that. Mainly the L and R buttons. I didn't clean them yet. And uh, maybe the D-pad. All right, so I got everything cleaned up as much as I want. So what I'm going to do is start putting it all back together. It actually tells you what color buttons to use, and it, it's even got the blue and reds for the uh, for the Japanese and European version. So they must use the same casing. Clearly, I'm going to put the start and select buttons in, the D-pad in. Well, these things only go in one way. Actually, well, they go in, if you put it this orientation, it'll fit because it has a notch here. If you flip it around, it'll fit because it has a notch here. But if you try to put in any one of these two, it won't fit. So that makes it super easy. All right, we need to finish putting this together. What I find is easiest is if you have to find something, if you're not going to, if you're going to set this on the table and do it, if you press these buttons in, they're going to actually mess with the setting of the rubber pieces that go on top so you can either lift it up if you want or you can kind of I don't know put it on top of something so the buttons aren't pressing I think I'm just gonna lift it up so with this you'll see once it sits down in that this little rubber piece goes around those two little holes there for this side you're gonna want to match up this rubber piece here with I believe this guy at the bottom I'm going with it looks good all right next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the PCB board on very gently so what you're gonna want to do is just kind of sit it on top a little bit kind of guiding these loose mini PCB boards for the LNRs and just kind of without pressing anything just kind of move it 
until it kind of falls into place. And once it falls into place, you can kind of hold it from the center. Make sure the PCB boards are good here and here. Then we're going to put this on. And we got to go around. Press it in. Like that. Goes around and in between these two posts here, that's to prevent it. So if you go to yank on it, it just pulls here. All the tension goes here, not on your plug, which will, you know, rip it off the PCB. So that's good. We can slide the L and R buttons in. Make sure that's in. Okay, now here comes the fun part. So this is up this is upside down. So normally this would be R and this would be L. So you have to think about it being backwards. So this button here is L. So it's gonna go here, but you also need the little poles, the little poles that go in. So I'm gonna set this down, pause it, readjust myself, and show you how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go with the L button, which obviously is gonna be on our right side. So all I did is I put the metal bar in between, kind of hold it so it doesn't fall out. This part's gonna be a little tricky because the wire's in my way. I'm gonna set it in. So then find the hole. That's what she said. Bang, there you go. Now that side is in. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Matter of fact, I didn't even think of this. Put the post in first. Then you could put the button on. Just make sure before you press it down too far that it sets. Sets in. Yeah, that worked even better. Yeah, should have done that the first time. Cool, so this is your last chance. Let me look around, make sure I didn't forget anything before you put it all together. You can take your back part. And like I said, you're just gonna let gravity kind of do the work at first. Lay it on top, so everything seems to line up. Oop, should have cleaned the buttons. And then you can start pressing. And then once it feels like it's together, Put some pressure in the middle, flip it around. Just kind of press on the buttons. Make sure everything is good. You don't want to put this thing together with the screws to find out that something wasn't lined up. The last part, all we gotta do is put these screws back in. I'm not gonna record that because everybody here can work a screwdriver. So I'm gonna put this thing together. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with my other controller. And then I'm gonna go test these out and hopefully I got working start buttons. All right, as a reference, I took apart my second controller and I feel like the select and start look different. So I'm recording this just to see if there's any difference. It definitely doesn't have that metal shiny bar the other one had in, in between. Um, but it's also very gunky here on both sides. So I'm going to clean this up and that should be, this should be the fix for this one. All right, so I got all the controllers put back together. This is actually, this is player one. This is the controller, this is the Pac-Man edition, as I like to call it. And we're gonna see. We're going to verse mode. And I can already tell, it's, it's working, it's working great. Um, select. And of course the other controller, which was working, but I also uh, had trouble with the start button and I just pressed it, it was fine. All right, so just make sure all the buttons still work. I didn't mess anything up. They all feel pretty good. Except this button doesn't quite feel great. It works, maybe because I pressed too loud. Yeah, this one's fine. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't test the select button. But this one didn't work at all. And now it works crisp and good. So, let's go to this controller, which didn't, didn't have a problem at all. Press it real lightly. Yeah, so we're in good shape. Just make sure all the other buttons work. So it looks like we are doing good. The only thing I need to do is to, to test the select button. Baby turtles in time. 
Not really sure if it has like a one or two player okay, star button. Yeah. There we go. That works fine. Swap the controller out. Attach the other one, select button. Start button's working good. Yeah, so two perfectly good working Super Nintendo controllers. I mean, the only really issue I had was with the start buttons, but they're both working really good. And that's really, that's really all there is to it. I mean, the most ideal way, like I mentioned before, is if you can get like a bucket of soap, water, and let the stuff sit in there and it can really get a good clean, I would actually prefer doing that than just using isopropyl alcohol, which will work. But sometimes you really need to let certain things soak, especially, especially a controller like this that was pretty disgusting. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully you learned a little something from this video. At least give you the confidence to open up your controller if you're having a problem with a button or two. If you have a problem with all your buttons and you have a bigger issue than just cleaning a contact or two. But for the most part, it's very common for certain buttons to stick because, I mean, they can get pretty disgusting, especially being almost 30 years old. If not, probably 30 years old coming up. So hopefully you liked this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out my NES Revisited series where I go through all the NES games by release date. And thanks for watching.